Salwe everyone. Welcome back to this channel of Latin Language Revival with your host, Marius Glabrius, presenting today the continuation of the first part of the conversations between Jesus of Nazareth and Pontius Pilate. This information is based on the Book of Nicodemus, a non-canonized, meaning it's not part of the Holy Bible, compilation of Gospels. However, it was a it is a historically valid book, much in alignment with all the occurrences and the events surrounding the ministry of and life of Jesus of Nazareth. I want to remind everyone that this is not an evangelistic channel, and this presentation is not designed to evangelize. On the contrary, it is designed to just simply listen to the spoken Latin language of the period. If you want to fast forward to listen to that, you're more than welcome to. This information I am presenting before that is historical information based on this book and of the Holy Bible as well. This is a redoing of an original presentation as well, because the first presentation had copyright music that I needed to remove. So it got a lot of attention, a lot of viewership, and I certainly hope that this one will as well. Emperor Tiberius was a Caesar of Rome in this period of time, and we're referring to 29 AD to 33 AD, which is the period that Jesus' ministry was in effect. It is also the period of time under Emperor Tiberius that the term Christian or Christianity was first used. Uh, it could have been at a later point, as a matter of fact. This is evidenced by his letters to and from Pliny the Younger, which at a later point we can discuss in a different video. Emperor Tiberius had two consuls beneath him, or under him, uh, in this case Caius Rufius Geminus and Lucius Rubelius Geminus in 29 AD. Under the consuls, they had client states, or kings and kingdoms and nations that would render taxes to Rome and allegiance to Rome, yet maintain their own sovereignship, or retain their own sovereignship, I should say, and while not being citizens of Rome. King Herod Antipas was the king of Galilee in this period, along with the prefect of the province of Judea, modern-day Israel and Palestine, Marcus Pontius Pilatus, and lastly we present Joseph Caiaphas of the Jewish religion, the high priest. At this period of time, the leadership in Caiaphas appeared before Pontius Pilate at the Praetorium. The Praetorium is similar to a municipal court where cases were heard and decided upon by the prefect, in this case Pontius Pilate. The grievances were dealing with this Jesus of Nazareth who was causing division, contention, undermining their authority, and violating the Sabbath by healing the sick. Pontius Pilate did not find anything wrong with this. In fact, he was a bit sarcastic about their accusation. Uh, perhaps he figured that if there was division and contention among the Jews, that was not a bad thing, really, for Rome, because at least they weren't focusing or putting in their time towards scheming against the Roman Empire. They also claimed, when they saw they gained no ground with this, they also claimed that he was calling himself King of the Jews and Son of God, which, if anything else, was a challenge to Caesar, the Caesar of Rome. Again, Pilate did not lend too much credence to any of this, uh, contrary to what we have heard over the years in film and materials that are in print, Pontius Pilate was really not an enemy of Jesus. He never had animosity towards Jesus. Quite the opposite. He was very empathetic of Jesus. Uh, and it is evidenced, again, in the Gospels, in the Bible, and in the book of Nicodemus, when he had finished listening to all these arguments, or the case from the 
leadership, he sent a runner or courier soldier over to bring Jesus to the praetorium in answer to these accusations. He also sent him with a cloak so that this could be warrant of summons to the praetorium. The runner left, returned same day, maybe the following day, and reported to the leadership and to Pontius Pilate that he had encountered Jesus at the entrance, the gates of Jerusalem, surrounded by a throng of supporters of all ages, children, women, men, throwing their cloaks, palms upon the ground on which the donkey upon which Christ was sitting on would walk upon. The courier produced Pontius Pilate's cloak and laid it also on the ground. To this, the leadership was appalled, disgusted, and considered it a horrible thing that he had done. Had pointed out to Pilate that this is inappropriate. Pilate then responded to them and asked them that if the children were out there cheering this Hosanna, Hosanna to Christ, which he asked what this term meant. They responded that it meant, blessed be he. They Then that's when he did not understand why, if they were cheering for him, if the same, the same Jews were doing this, then the runner had not done anything inappropriate. At this point, Pontius Pilate went ahead and sent the runner back out to bring Jesus respectfully, but in any manner, to the praetorium. To this, the runner did bring him from wherever he met him, met with him, met up with him, marched him in between the standards that we see in this illustration, which were these rods with the images of uh, Rome's emblems on top, marched them in between these in the courtyard leading to the entrance of the praetorium. It is reported that the, in, that the standards bowed in adoration to Jesus when they entered the praetorium. This was reported to Pilate. Pilate did not believe this at all. He had Christ escorted back out and re-entered through the courtyard told the soldiers to hold their standards firmly. When he was marched through again, Jesus, the standards once again bowed in adoration. Pilate witnessed this and was very much afraid, according to what the book of Nicodemus claims. He may have believed at this point that Christ did have demons on his side or was divine. He did not understand what he was witnessing, and was very much afraid of this Jesus of Nazareth. When Jesus was presented before Pontius Pilate uh, in the Praetorium, as we see in this illustration, the leadership continued their accusations towards Christ to which Pontius Pilate then asked Jesus, Quid adversus te testificantur nihil licis? What is witnessed against you? Say you nothing to these accusations, he asked Jesus Christ. Christ, in very much full of authority as he's always been described, and I believe very just awesome response, he says, Nihil lixisent nisi potentes, omnibus eadem licet turpitudidem et virtutem oribus locuuntur, eos idem testificaturus sunt. This in English is, unless they had the power, they would say nothing. Everyone has the power of his own mouth to speak good or evil. They will see to it. And this is in Book of Nicodemus chapter 2. To this, the leadership went berserk, went bananas, uh, especially with that last phrase, they will see to it. And in the next presentation, 
I will go into a little more detail as to their response to this and the extreme hatred that they had for Christ. It is incredible. Thank you for listening. Wale.